Edward got the COVID. And I got the, the Rona. He's got the Rona. So we, you know, we don't want to get anyone sick. The leaking Rona. <laughs> I'm coughing too now. See, I'm on <laughs> it's this virtually call. Transmitted. Yeah, I'm, exactly. I'm on this call with you for five fucking minutes and I'm already coughing, dude. It's too much. It's too much. I will have to say though, you look way more tired than I do. Um, I, I was up late last night, so. That's pretty much it. <laughs> yeah, and all the fucking stress from today, cause dude, they broke into my fucking car, and well, okay, so they didn't break break into it, which is good. Like, nothing was damaged, but they mm-hmm. stole my fucking. They they stole like the house keys from my parents' house and stuff. They didn't steal any like paperwork or anything that I that I parents' that house that I know of. Yeah, cause I I keep the key in there, so I'm like I don't forget it at home or whatever when I'm going to their house, right? Cause you know, again, I'm I'm not planning to get my car stolen, but I'm sorry, my car broken into. Hey, you never know. <clears throat> yeah, but be leaving it open, you know. Yeah, but and it sucks because they stole it and all the keychains that were on it. Like, there's one key on it, but there's like 30 keychains on it, and I'm like, really? Like, come on, man! Like when those. Uh, when when the thieves that stole my license plates, they took uh-huh. the fucking vanity plate for Cal State LA. Like, what do you need the the vanity plate for? What do you need the vanity plate for? I I, I in the in the case of the vanity plate, it's more understandable because they're like in a rush. They're just like, okay, take everything, go. But in like, the case of like it, the, it pops the off key, and then phew, I don't know. In the case of the single key, it's like, oh come on, now you're just being petty. And now you're yeah. just yeah, now you're just being petty because it was one key and like you know. It's not my house key, house key, so that's a good thing. But <clears throat> yeah, I tell my parents. I mean, it's your parents' house key, like yeah, yeah. They, you know, I already told them, so they're. If I know who you swapped. are, like you know, it's still, still oof. Yeah, they stole my dash cam, a bunch of Amazon returns I had in the trunk. Um, but you know, luckily I didn't leave anything. Like usually, I leave my work laptop in the backpack in the back. Oh, imagine. Oh. They took your Yu-Gi-Oh cards. <laughs> oh, dude, yeah. that would have been the worst. No, I'm like looking. I got my Yu-Gi-Oh cards right here. Better than, uh, I know, or if I like put it any other packages, hair, but my sweater, exactly. Uh. So yeah, that sucks. But um, they they found a way to jimmy it open. So luckily, you know, it yeah. wasn't um like again nothing broken or anything. Filed a police report and everything, so I'm gonna have to go through insurance for that. So that's that's gonna be a headache. But that was my day. In the ass. Ah uh, yeah. What, what's how's the quarantine going? Have you caught up on any movies or anything? Uh, no, I, I tried, I was, uh, I started watching the menu, but then I fell asleep, Bruh. even though like I, I was enjoying it so much, but I was like, I was a little high. So I just fell asleep. finish it. Finish the movie. It's a good movie. It was, it's, it's really good. Like I, I even saw a couple spoilers mm-hmm. on TikTok because, uh, every time like, like TikTok recently in the last year has changed like dramatically, but like just a couple of months ago, like maybe two, three, it was like, it switched from like a bunch of like good content and like creative content to a tidal wave for like a good month and a half of just e-girls nothing but e-girls uh on that i don't know man the algorithm's reading your phone so Literally everyone i knew was inundated with e-girls whether or not they they did it. like my friend like noosh everyone everyone yeah. had e-girls on their TikTok. i i get that because i i get that um on instagram like just fucking Instagram thoughts will pop up for no reason. And it's like, I'll have just shit post memes all over my discover feed. And then just one reel of someone going like, mm, 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 mm. and I'm like, and I, I don't want to watch that. Like, why is, why is this being pushed to me? Like, yeah, if like, I click on stuff, fine, I get but like, it. after a certain point you get, you scroll and there's like 10 back to back. You're like, all right, come on. I'm trying to like, yeah, like entertain myself here. I'm not trying to, trying to watch. Exactly. Uh, but recently, in the last month, it switched. It switched over to uh, pirated uh, content, basically. Uh, it'll be like Family Guy Part 17 of 32. Like yes. in the early YouTube day. <laughs> yeah, they, so they're, they're, that's another thing. For some reason, Family Guy and American Dad and like mostly American cartoons are pirated a lot and just placed on YouTube. And it'll be like an account that says like Singapore 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So like... Yeah, 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 it's not you know like user eight six nine whatever. exactly, and it's, yeah, yeah. it says like uploaded like four hours ago, like because it keeps getting taken yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, but I, it, I've seen it, that on a TikTok lot. at least they have a way around it. So mm-hmm. this works simultaneously to keep your attention and also to get around like the ban hammer and like the the mm-hmm. content stuff. Yeah, uh, they'll put like a video of like someone just like cleaning a pipe or something or like patching a pipe up with like 
some sort of like substance or like someone cleaning a driveway or something that's like oh. otherwise would be like visually stimulating. They place it on top. Yeah. Yeah. They'll place it on top or on bottom or side to side, just like, you know, to skirt around it. And that's been like TikTok for like the last month, mm -hmm. like just Rick and Morty, uh, family guy, uh, friends. Yeah. Uh, stuff that's like really like, mm -mm, the like popular Big Bang stuff. Theory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not even necessarily popular stuff because you don't see The Office. It has to be like comedies that are like, like one, two, three, you get the punchline across and then on to the next thing mm. or something that grabs your attention really quick, like mid episode. Yeah. So, so speaking about the algorithm, right? I'm like looking through my feed, right? So you see, it's just a bunch of memes and then someone's fucking selfie for some reason. Yeah. And you see it, right? Like it's memes, memes, memes. Yeah, memes, memes. It's all memes. And then, yeah, like someone's fucking, and then, and then someone else's fucking selfie, like how how are those what what do those selfies have to do with my shit posts okay because i got I a lot of them posts. yeah oh and this is the other thing that you're doing now it's just someone's laptop recording an episode of the show that's fucking hilarious the scene is so funny and then it's 30 minutes huh <laughs> Yeah, and it's literally just like ten minutes of the show, just like like a third of the episode, just chilling there. Yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, so. but you know, speaking of the algorithm, uh, <laughs> it lost one of its uh, biggest warriors uh, today. Wh wh which one I of its warriors? Call them that. <laughs> which one of the algorithm warriors? <laughs> the algorithm warriors. Uh, yeah. Do you want Do you want to start with uh, the Tate brothers? The Tate brother. So we've got two Andrews today, Andrew True. Callahan and Andrew Tate, and they are both. Un, uh, well, for Andrew Callahan's case, it's still technically allegedly assaulting, but allegedly. yeah, there's a lot of pretty. Uh, I mean, yeah. Well, the thing is, like in a friend group, if someone is like, "Hey, this person assaulted me," you don't wait for like the the exactly. legal court of law. Exactly. So, <laughs> so it's oh. credible enough at this point, in my opinion. Perfect. Andrew Callahan apologizes earlier today, right? Today is the 15th of Up January. Date news. Yeah, this is coming tomorrow, right? <clears throat> Andrew Callahan is speaking for himself regarding sexual misconduct allegations that have been hurled his way, saying sorry to those affected while also stepping back. The host of All Gas No Breaks, it says the host, but he was he's not the the host anymore, you know? Yeah, wasn't there like a whole like issue where like they like cheated yeah. about matter shit? His or new whatever? mockumentary, This Place Rules, right? So he posted a public video Sunday on a YouTube channel that he seems to have just created. Whoa! In response, yo, yo! yo All right, let's watch yo. this. Let's fucking watch this right. <laughs> God Green cap it. Damn. Green share now. Get right. the evidence. Let's go. Pretty much. All right. Let me share this second. Oh, uh, fucking speaking. Speaking of that shit, did you see how like his lawyer was trying to like pass it off as like that the girl was blackmailing him? When it wasn't anything remotely close when you actually read the text. That's terrible. Yeah. So watch it. <laughs> Ready. All right. Um, I never thought I'd make a video like this, but um, you hear right? It's an important conversation to. Uh, have. yeah, more or less. Be fully accountable, honest, and uh, transparent with all of you guys. So I'd like to start by thanking every single person who's came out uh, in the past week um, to speak about different ways in which my behavior has made them feel um, uncomfortable or pressured during a sexual situation and to people who said that I've made unwanted advances and uh, had a hard time with rejection. Um, I'm sure this was not easy to do. It's never easy to speak out. And it was uh, hard for me to hear as well, because to be honest with you, up until this point, I didn't even really realize that I had this pattern that had affected multiple people. Um, I'd also like to apologize for my silence. Um, I think that when this stuff first came out, I was in a state of denial and shock. Um, I was, you know, just riding the high for my movie that just came out. And then within 48 hours, I was denounced by my closest collaborators. And uh, my name was printed in, in, in 40 different news outlets uh, next to the words sexual misconduct. And I just kind of spiraled into a mental health crisis. Uh, I'm okay now, but I don't really think this is about me. This is about the people that I've affected. So I just want to express my complete sympathy, respect, and uh, support for anyone who I've done wrong by. And I really want to do better and be fully accountable for everything that I've done. So that being said, I want to make a few things clear. Um, I've always taken no for an answer. Um, as far as consent, I've never uh, overstepped that line. Um, but, you know, I think I want to have a more nuanced and important conversation about power dynamics, pressure, and... Uh, coercion 
because, you know, like I said, I think for, for a long time, I was behaving in a way that I actually thought was normal. Um, I thought that, you know, going home from the bar alone made you a loser. Um, I thought that persistence was a form of flattery. And I thought that, you know, if at first somebody was reluctant, you know, they're playing hard to get, just try harder. And if you think someone's feeling you, you know, make a physical advance and uh, see if they go with it. And I think that, especially I realized when so many uh, young people, especially young men, rushed to defend me uh, when this stuff first started coming out, that this type of sex pest behavior is normalized. And a lot of people think this stuff is normal when I don't think that it is. And I think that I want to be fully responsible for not having a fluid understanding of consent and what enthusiastic two-way consent looks like. Um, that being said, a lot of the things that have been said online about me uh, are not true. A lot of things are missing really important contextual information that I think would change people's interpretation of a lot of these situations, but I'm not here to invalidate anybody's lived experience. Uh, if you feel pressured, you know, that's just what it is. I hope that young people and young men in particular can use my mistakes to learn and uh, move through life with a better understanding of consent. Um, as far as what I have planned, I'm not really sure what comes next. I mean, obviously, you know, reporting is my one true love and I'm 25 years old and I have my whole life ahead of me. But I really think that I need to do some serious work on myself and uh, figure myself out. So I'm gonna start therapy sessions pretty much immediately. Um, also, not to blame alcohol, but I truly believe that uh, alcohol was a contributing factor to my poor decision making. And I think that alcohol in general has had a devastating impact on my life. So I think I'm gonna uh, make the decision to join the 12-step program for Alcoholics Anonymous. And during this journey into sobriety, I wanna take a serious step back from public life. And like I said, figure myself out. Um, and I hope that this reaches uh, the ears of anyone who's felt affected by me. Um, I'd love to reach out to you or you can reach out to me even just for me to say, I'm sorry. And uh, I really apologize and I appreciate you all. Um, I also wanna to apologize to um, my closest collaborators, you know, my friends, my family, and people who will have to wear this stain on their career forever. Um, you guys don't deserve this. And, uh, I love you guys. Uh, that being said, uh, if you never want to watch Channel 5 again, um, I understand. Um, I hope you remember the uh, missions of radical empathy and uh, media literacy uh, that we try to put into the world through our, through our coverage. Um, all right. That's all I want to say. Damn. So, um, I mean, yeah, it seems like, obviously, it seems very sincere. Yes, but so did Logan Paul's, to be honest. It's like a Logan Paul video to me, to be honest. Mm. I, I haven't seen the Logan Paul one, to be fair. But the other thing I'm taking away from it is at least, you know, uh, so acknowledging, apologizing, yeah, all, all that, right? But he's also saying, like, the ways in which he's going to change. He didn't just say, oh, I'm going to do better. And then, you know, continue to be shitty. He's like, 12-step program, taking, you know, doing therapy and stuff like that. And being, again, very specific with the, the changes that he's going to make. So Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, it, I, I would need, like, a, at least a couple of years. It, it, mm -hmm. Like, some of the reports that you heard, like, for people putting their face, uh, like, to the account. Because, like, when it's one anonymous person, it's like, whatever. You can fake that easily online. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like one anonymous person accuses you of sexual assault. When you're a public figure, that's not hard to yeah. uh, fake. When it's like multiple women, you know, doing well, multiple specific accusations, that's a lot that, you know, you need like a deep state conspiracy theory cover up to try to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of them was literally about like how she had to like kick him, literally kick him out of the car, like physically. Yeah. Uh, and it's one of the other things too that I saw on Reddit was they were saying, um, "Oh, we've seen him. Um, we we've seen him uh, when he was drunk. Like the, the, again, this is a personal account, but they were like, oh yeah, uh, I was at one of his shows um, after he was like getting wasted and stuff, and he was like a completely different person when he was wasted. Um, which I mean, yeah, like it, it definitely inhibits your behavior, but like alcohol doesn't immediately turn you into a piece of shit either. You know, yeah, like there might be something yeah. underlying there, but that's why he said like, Hey, he's acknowledging he has a problem. He's going to get help for it. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm just, I'm like, I damn, I, like, I, I'm not going to watch his movie anymore, you know, but it's like, yeah, well. 
Like it's, I mean, it sucks because you know he was like a a good like thing person. It sucks that he turned out to be like a monster. But uh, like yeah, like I mean, the apology read I guess is a good first step. But I I don't know. Aside from like years of like like you know doing better and like com- like completely changing and like I don't know. Mm-hmm. I I don't know. I don't know. Like what what would it take people to trust like Kevin Spacey again? Oh, I mean, yeah, that one, I feel like that one is a little different, though, because... I, I don't, like, I don't, like, when it comes to, like, like public opinion, at least, mm-hmm. I don't think there's that much of a difference. Like, a lot of the accounts that came out for what Andrew Callahan did was essentially rape. Mm. And, I, you know, I don't know. I You know, the, aside from, like, a complete, like, years of, like, change and, like... Because, like, yeah, I, I do think people can change mm-hmm. uh, after a while. But the degree of what you do and com- what you need to do to change, I mean, just kind of stating it at this point isn't kind of enough. Mm-hmm. Like, it's good that he's doing specifics and all that, but it's, you know, it's going to take years. I, I, I don't like with what he did and like what's the accusations against him, unless, you know, years of like protracted change and like, you know, aside from that. <laughs> yeah, I, I get you. Um, but like so, so the thing I, I think the difference the main difference is, is always attitude because Kevin Spacey was like denying it trying to cover it up like actively trying to cover it up uh, and then like he posted that insane video of him like in character going oh uh, you know uh, you know what let's watch let's watch his insane absolute yeah, that's fucking true, that's true, that's insane true. video I, I do agree though like attitude does play a big portion into it like yeah, that, that's why right. I like I did nothing wrong I I don't. I, I would not equate them because of the again because of the way they're acting. Mm-hmm. Um, but let's, yeah, let's let's see this fucking insane man. You have to touch on though. H three H three basically uh uh released info and where Andrew basically admitted that like he had done all that stuff like the way that they had said it. When did he release it? Because he's been on a break since almost right before. after, like oh, almost right after the entire story broke. That but, was the, the first Andrew Callahan response. It was through H three H three. But where? Um. Oh, look at that. Yeah. H three H three's Ethan Klein claims Andrew Callahan has confirmed the allegations are true. Mm-hmm. He privately confirmed them. Damn, that sucks. Yeah, but um. Yeah, and then immediately after like confirming this, his lawyer essentially came out uh, trying to blame the person of blackmailing, and then that's like the, when they showed the text of that, that was not what was going on whatsoever. It was more well, like a tongue in cheek, like, "Oh, you know, if you ever want to help pay for my uh, uh, medical bills for what you did, mm-hmm. you know, here's my Venmo." Well, this is uh, Kevin Spacey, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> What's with this production quality? (laughs) I know what you want. I can't hear you. Oh, sure, they may have tried to separate us, but what we have is too strong. It's too powerful. I mean, after all, we shared everything, you and I. I told you my deepest, darkest secrets. I showed you exactly what people are capable of. I shocked you with my honesty, but mostly I challenged you and made you think. And you trusted me even though you knew you shouldn't. What? So we're not done, no matter what anyone says. And besides, I know what you want. You want me back. Of course, some believed everything and have just been waiting with bated breath to hear me confess it all. They're just dying to have me declare that everything said is true and that I got what I deserved. Wouldn't that be easy? But it was all so simple. Only you and I both know it's never that simple, not in politics and not in life. But you wouldn't believe the worst without evidence, would you? You wouldn't rush to judgments without facts, would you? Did you? No, not you. You're smarter than that. Anyway, all this presumption made for such an unsatisfying ending. And to think it could have been such a memorable send-off. I mean, if you and I have learned nothing else these past years, it's that in life and art, nothing should be off the table. We weren't afraid, not of what we said, not of what we did, and we're still not afraid. Because I can promise you this. If I didn't pay the price for the things we both know I did do, 
I'm certainly not going to pay the price for the things I didn't do. Oh, of course, they're going to say I'm being disrespectful, not playing <laughs> by the rules. Bruh. Like I ever played by anyone's rules before. I never did. And you loved it. Anyhow. <laughs> despite all the poppycock, the animosity, the headlines, the impeachment without a trial, despite everything, despite even my own death, I feel surprisingly good. And my confidence grows each day that soon enough you will know the full truth. Well, wait a minute. Now that I think of it, you never actually saw me die, did you? Conclusions can be so deceiving. Miss me? Jesus. Was that and was and, and what, what, like what a part yes. of the video? Or was it like added by someone? <laughs> that last part at the end was a hundred percent his fucking that that was his <laughs> that was him that was him dude like i don't know what else to tell you i don't know what the fuck that's like the absolute worst fucking thing you can add to like oh i, I, I know. like <laughs> oh, <laughs> accused of sexual uh, assault i'm gonna fucking release a video about it you know being a complete sociopath like the one i play on television yeah but in real life yeah <laughs> and i'm gonna add the worst possible sound effect like and it's funny two <laughs> months ago legal victory for kevin spacey a jury found the actor not liable in a sexual battery case dating back to the 1980s my goodness. is it because of um statute of limitations i don't i don't know about that i would assume so because it was 30 years later i don't know let me be frank 13 million views jesus yeah, that's why. Uh, well, that's why. What's that other fucking dude from um, the the big one, the one that started the whole Me Too thing? Harvey Weinstein. Oh yeah. Uh, that that that's why he got a lot of his cases got dropped only because of statute of limitations. Hmm. It, it, in other words, they waited too long to come out with it, and now there's not nothing legally that could happen. And so he that only sucks. got caught up on like one or two or something like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, um, on to Andrew Tate now. On to Andrew Tate. AP uh, News. Romania... From sociopath to sociopath. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Romania tows luxury cars and yes. other assets. Romanian authorities descended on a compound near Bucharest on Saturday to tow away a fleet, fleet of luxury cars and other assets worth an estimated $3.9 million in the case investigating Andrew Tate, the divisive social media personality who is detained in the country on charges of human trafficking. Hey, Romania. Uh, yeah. Ask me. Ask me what color my Bugatti is. What color is your Bugatti? The same color as Andrew Tate's Invisible. <laughs> ah, my goodness. It's um. What what was that fucking meme that I sent? Where it's like when someone asks you if you're top G, but then they just shank you in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Legit? they they removed a total of fifteen luxury cars, fourteen designer watches, and a partridge in a pear tree. Yeah, 3.6 million euros. So, yeah, 3.9 million dollars. <sighs> that's crazy. A blue Rolls Royce, a Ferrari, a Damn, Porsche. Yeah, that's crazy anyways. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It says Rolls Royce, Ferrari, Porsche, BMW, Aston Martin, and Mercedes Benz. He doesn't have a Bugatti. Bugatti. He's not no got Bugatti. his Bugatti. <laughs> oh, so uh, I think some other rich asshole uh bought the bought some of the cars before they before the police took them away. Mm. Cuz you yeah. know the Romanian police ain't uh and exactly the the least scrupulous yeah. of individuals. And it's funny because the only reason they're like giving him the fucking boot is because he bragged about how he could bribe Romanian officials. Mm-hmm. Like there's corruption and there's bragging about corruption. So the corrupt people are going, fuck, like we can't let them know. So yeah. fucking bring like, we gotta maintain down. a presence of civility. Like the only reason people like participate in their justice system is because yes. they maintain that presence yes. of civility of like justice. Like once you brag about it, it's over. <laughs> it's, it's so funny. After the assets were moved Saturday, a post appeared on Tate's Twitter account, which read, 
Anyone who believes I'm a human trafficker is genuinely a moron, and anyone smart enough to understand the American system is unfair would be mind blown by the injustice of the Romanian system. Okay, stupid. it's like it's so I, I moved to Romania because how the sexual uh, stuff is like a lot less. They were here. corrupt, and now I'm getting, <laughs> now yeah. I'm getting attacked because of the corruption. Pretty much, you fucking idiot. Oh God, fucking. Yeah, he's um. It's great. Oh no, oh, my God. but uh, going over the the most recent thing, they got Wait, recordings what? of him basically saying that he loves it when he rapes people. Like the more he, the the less they can resist, the more he loves it. The more he gets turned on. Uh, I, see, since I'm uh not a journalist, I never go to the direct source. So I watched it through this uh, dude called Shark Three Zero. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, shark 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 Boy over here. Uh, did a video basically covering it. And like, there's like the article basically has like the the audio clip of him basically literally saying exactly that, <laughs> dude. And it's funny because I'm looking at um, YMH, right? Your mom's house studios. Oh, is oh, that no. Michael? <laughs> I'm gonna come. Yo, it's Michael. Michael got your Bugatti. Michael, what color is your Bugatti? It's the color of your titties. Oh, <laughs> rosy pink hell yeah so yeah we've got um it's it's i mean oh, it's here we go. nuts what do you got show me right there oh my god in 2015 controversial alpha male influencer was arrested over another allegation of assault in the uk he said i love raping you my goodness <laughs> Supplied. Oh, Oh, she supplied police with those messages. So it's not even like, oh, it's in doubt. Am I a bad person? Because the the more you didn't like it, the more I enjoyed it. I fucking loved how much you hated it. Turn me on. Why am I like that? Why? I am one of the most dangerous men on this planet. Sometimes you forget exactly how lucky you were to get fucked by me. Jeez. Would you rather me pin you down and make you do things you didn't like, or would you rather fuck? <laughs> you didn't like that I was thinking I can do whatever I want to. That's what it is. I'm the smartest person on this fucking planet. <laughs> I'm seriously so offended I strangled you a little bit. Uh-huh. You fucking pass out. <laughs> Chill the fuck out. Jesus Christ, I thought you were cool. What's wrong with you? I love how Chris, he's literally, he's caught in 4K because he recorded himself. That is amazing. Saying I'm the smartest person alive. <laughs> the smartest man alive. Uh, I'm Tate, so smart. Uh, I, get, I, I Tate I Richards. the evidence the police officers use. <laughs> Honestly. And on oh, top of and that. And, and yeah. Speaking of how corrupt the, the Romanian police was, mm-hmm. apparently like a lot of the women had already come forward beforehand. Mm-hmm. Uh, for like, and but like the police basically waited on it for four years because they didn't think it was in any importance. Like they they right. they don't think rape is of any importance as a crime, so they just don't do anything on it, and they didn't for like four years. So if Andrew Tate literally kept his mouth shut, he would have literally gotten away with it. That's nuts, dude, and it's crazy because some of our other favorite people here, um, Justin Roiland also, oh Rick yeah, and Morty. Fuck. Co-creator Justin Roiland faces felony domestic violence charges. Roiland was charged with domestic battery and false imprisonment in May of 2020 after an incident with a woman he was dating, according to a criminal complaint. He was charged with felony domestic violence in Orange County, California, in connection with the 2020 incident, according to a criminal complaint filed in May. He appeared in court Thursday for a pretrial hearing. He pleaded not guilty. In a statement, one of Roland's attorneys wrote that his client is innocent. He expects the case will be dismissed. We look forward to clearing Justin's name and helping him move forward as swiftly as possible. Roiland, 42, was charged with one felony count of domestic battery with corporal injury and one felony count of false imprisonment by menace, violence, fraud, and or deceit. NBC News is the first to report publicly on the case. He pleaded not guilty on both charges. The court r- records are still sealed, but the available public documents um, say Royland was charged. He was arrested and released on a $50,000 bond in August of 2020 and arraigned on October of 2020. So, oh, a protective order filed said Royland is not to harass, threaten, or surveil the person named in the protective order, who's not known. He can't go within 100 feet of them. 
and he has to turn in any firearms he owned or possessed. The order lasts until October of 2023. That's crazy. So there's body body cam footage, abuse investigation reports, medical reports, and recordings of interviews. So they're, they're all withheld right now from the public because of the yeah. protective order. Oh, because it's an ongoing investigation. Uh, I mean, that's that's whatever. Yeah, like it, it's not. They're not gonna better call Saul and like, oh, we're gonna release it all for like the drama and stuff. So you know, it's like, ooh, spicy. Yeah, no, but like, yeah. Ah, uh, you know, it just it just kind of be that way sometimes. Uh, I mean, yeah. You so guys, you guys don't you guys don't follow Camacho on Instagram, huh? No, I don't even have an Instagram. Oh fuck! Make you one. Know, you, get, you should get an Instagram, dude. But anyways, um, he's like a red pill guy now. He's like quoting Andrew Tate and like posting ah! Donald Trump. Do, do you send him? Did you send him the thing of him being arrested? And is he like, oh, he's in the Matrix? He's just like, uh, basically, like he's all like that now, super weird and conservative and weird. But like, he's like, uh, you're stuck, bro. You're stuck, bro. Sorry, man. Sorry that you're stuck. And I'm like, okay, Jesus. I'm stuck. Who's stuck? Uh, is he saying that you, like Michael, is stuck? I'm stuck. Because now he's like, has a different, like, I guess, lifestyle that he wants to present. Fucking cringy. Me when I have no bitches. <laughs> oh my god. And then on top of that, Numerous women subsequently have come forward with stories about Justin dating back many years. He's been grooming underage girls by text for at least the last seven years. There's numerous women who have come forward with texts and date receipts from when they were underage as young as 15. And Justin Roiland messaged them implying he was sexually attracted to them. In a thread of since deleted screenshots from one of his accusers, Roiland messaged a 16-year-old fan, nicknamed her Jailbait, and message her when he was drunk. Another has posted and since deleted messages from Royland, calling a 16-year-old hot and not stopping once she tells him she's underage, making comments like, you better not post this conversation, you bitch, lol. After making repeated comments about her appearance. Uh, one woman has openly accused him of sexual assault. Holy Do you ever find shit. it funny how, like, all of these, like, like kind of, like, sexual assaulty type people... I guess except for like Andrew Callahan or whatever, uh, eventually come out as like pedophiles too. Like Andrew Tate is a pedophile. Uh, like he's been caught quoting saying like, "Oh yeah, like I, I love thirteen year olds. Thirty is when you can first, you know, fuck someone half your age." Uh, yeah. You know, uh, and then uh, now Justin, not Justin Roiland. Uh, yeah, Justin Roiland, right? Mm-hmm. What's his name? Yes, yeah, him. Morning. And then like uh, fucking what's what's that other fucker? The other red pill dude. The one that's like on Twitter all the time with his like handle like alpha male or whatever. Uh, the fucking Liver King. I don't know. <laughs> I don't fucking know, dude. There's so many of them now at this point. Liver King was uh, fake too. We saw that. Yeah. Well, let me see if I can find him really quick. <laughs> What'd you say, Michael? Do you sneeze? I had a sneeze. Oh, nice. Nick Adams. That's the mm, dude. No idea. Nick Nick Adams was also like a pedophile type person. Uh. Like all these like right wing like red pilled people like eventually come out as like like just straight pedophiles. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's just interesting. It's interesting the ghosts. Um, but like, yeah, it's, it's never just one offense. It's never just like oh, it's sexual assault. You know, it, like it never really, it never really seems like oh, it's just one thing that they do wrong. It's like always like all these other things as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it, it sucks, but oh well, doesn't suck as bad as Velma though. All right, all right, guys. All right. So all we've right. seen. Let's, let's, we're gonna so we're gonna many. do a hard transition here. <laughs> That's a hard what is that pivot. About? Velma. What, is this? what did she do? I don't understand. She's black. Like, no, 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 no. I don't... Listen, listen. So we have Mindy Kaling, who is um, I believe she's Indian, right? Um. Don't Eastern remember. Eastern Asian, right? As 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 people say nowadays, right? So yeah. Mindy Kaling Kaling has basically done a self insert as Velma Dinkley. And yeah. then instead of making any actual jokes 
she's she's providing like meta commentary and she's just mean um i, I have a very good i have a very good um let, 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 let's let's watch this video and i will present it to you and we will be able to see why it's so bad okay you guys ready all right pop it up pop it up I'm trying it's taking fucking pop that forever. pussy all right exactly so this is what we got excited because hbo max finally dropped the trailer for what's sure to be the hottest comedy oh, of fuck. 2023 <laughs> maybe the best comedy ever since human beings i feel called out by this video laugh, giggle, Watch. <laughs> smile it's all been leading up to this moment where we get to witness pure humor from a show called velma this is the latest in this never-ending trend to take beloved ip and change everything about it and create something abominable from it this follows in the footsteps of the greats that came before it, such as the Halo show, the Resident Evil Netflix show, Witcher Blood Origin. It's got big shoes to fill, but after this trailer, I'm convinced that it might be the worst out of all of them. And you know what that means. I'm going to sit down and waterboard myself with the horrible jokes that this show is going to let rip. I'm going to watch it. Now, of course, you all know Velma is a big character from the Scooby-Doo franchise. It's been around for many decades now. I just realized this isn't the review. Let me find the review. Because he already had the review. Velma's worse than I expected. There it is. Yeah, I did it. I went where no one should go. I watched the first two episodes of Velma. I'm not a hero. I'm just doing what any man would do in my position to protect the people he cares about. You. <laughs> what I've just done today, this brave stunt, is basically diving on a live grenade in order to shield you from the unbearable, insufferable cringe of this show. Don't be deceived by this propaganda that's floating all around Twitter where they're wiggling their finger or twirling their shirts over their head celebrating that Velma had the biggest premiere day for an HBO Max original animated series. Don't be fooled here. Don't let the devil pull the wool over your eyes here. This is a little Jedi mind trick here. The reason this had the biggest premiere for an animated show on HBO Max is because it's the only animated show left on HBO Max. They canceled every other cartoon they've ever fucking had, pretty much. It's been a huge controversy over the last, like, six months. They don't okay, have hold, hold up, hold up. Left. I am Thus, unbelievably salty. One. So, of course, it's... Unbelievably upset that they canceled Infinity Train for this bullshit. Infinity Train was such a good fucking show, and they canceled it for this bullshit. Young Justice too. They only ordered one season and refused to order any more. Like I guess to make way for the for like a, a bunch of new stuff because Warner Brothers doesn't give a fuck about animation. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Both unbelievably good shows and they fucking all all to shit, all to shit for a shit show. Yeah, it's pretty bad. It's gonna be the biggest premiere. This accolade is completely meaningless. It's like me proudly proclaiming that I have the largest wiener in this house right now <laughs> because I'm the only fucking person in this house. Like, there's no competition. It doesn't hold any weight. Just because Velma had the biggest premiere for an animated show means absolutely nothing when there is no other animated shows on HBO Max that it competes with. So, I don't think the show is popular for what it's worth, but I don't think I'm alone in being a hate watcher of it. I watched it knowing full well I probably wasn't going to like it. I was super open to being pleasantly surprised, but that didn't happen. In fact, the first two episodes are worse than I expected from watching the trailer. I was very generous and gave the smallest chance that perhaps the trailer only highlighted the show's stinkiest moments, but I was very, very wrong. The show is stinkier than three garbage trucks having sex in a sulfur factory. It is fucking terrible. And I'd like to go over some of it right now. So I've watched the first two episodes. I, of course, can't show any clips from it for obvious reasons. So I'm just going to have to paint a picture of the things that I witnessed, the atrocities, the fucking torture. Obviously, this is all my opinion, Fuck but I on his arm. make an argument that it's factual because everyone seems to hate this show. I assume like a vaccine. So I think this is just yeah, like a vaccine like band-aid or blood. moments where everyone comes together to hate something equally because the show is just that awful. Now, I will say, I do think a lot of this was actually written by ChatGPT. A lot of these jokes feel AI-generated, and one thing that stayed consistent from episode 1 and episode 2 is they used the same joke formula at least 50 fucking times, and I'm not exaggerating. When they didn't know what kind of joke to make or how to inject humor into a situation when they were going over their quota for bad jokes to fucking ham fist in here, they'd always fall back on the tried and true getting meta with its comedy. 
So they'll say things like, oh, this is that part in rom-com shows where we're supposed to kiss, but this isn't a rom-com show, so we shouldn't kiss. But if it was rom-com, we'd like totally kiss right now. Or in the very first episode, they did, they pulled like a full-blown big mouth here where they just have like asses of these high school, like 15-year-olds or whatever, just all over the place in the showers. And they're talking about like, don't you ever find it weird how in like rom-com shows they really put a lot of gratuitous nudity and sexual references in their first episode but then it kind of dwindles off and it's not indicative of the rest of the show that's so weird right as their like asses are all over the place it's supposed to be like really meta like haha oh they're they're in on the joke haha yeah shows do that so fucking tiresome and gets really really grating it's not just like a bad joke but it's a joke that's so bad and used so many times that it just begins to, be, to get like frustrating to hear which is kind of like an irrational response to hearing a bad joke, and I get that. But like after the 50th fucking time of me hearing them set up that same thing of like, ah, oh, well, this is actually just like in that movie where I'm supposed to solve this mystery, but that movie had a weird ending, so I'm hoping that here that won't happen because, I mean, it's not a movie. It's just, I, I can't stand it. And they do it so often. Now, setting aside just like that series of bad jokes, every joke in here isn't good. And it's not even close. I don't even think they tried to make good humor here. I don't really know what they tried to accomplish, but it's all over the place. So, first of all, they made Velma the most unlikable character in the show. She's like a genuine douchebag, like a huge asshole. She judges everyone. She's rude to everyone. She insults everyone. She's mean to literally everyone. Norville, who's supposed to be the equivalent of Shaggy in here, like just confesses to Velma like he has feelings for her and she laughs in his face calling him like a fucking comedian loser because she'd never actually have any feelings for him he's such an unlovable unlikable loser it's so humorous that he'd even pretend that he has a chance with her so she just keeps laughing in his face about how it was such like a side-splitting gut-busting joke that he has feelings for her because she just looks at him like a brother and nothing else so it's, uh, it's so laughable that he'd actually feel that way it's hard to like her in any capacity. She is like the actual embodiment of just the worst character. I don't know what they were thinking. I don't know if they're going to like try and evolve her to be more likable as the show goes on. It kind of like hints that that's the direction they're going. But that's still a stupid direction to take it. You took the Scooby-Doo IP and borrowed the characters' names. And you didn't even bring Scooby with you, which I actually think is for the best now. After watching the first two episodes, I'm glad they took Scooby behind the barn and put him down because he did not deserve this. This is a fate worse than death. So I'm happy he's not here to be absolutely fucking ruined here. But they took the character names. Uh, they have Velma here. And they've made her fucking insufferable why it's not a fun character arc to follow this person become less insufferable as she learns to stop being a judgmental piece of shit but the crazy thing is i wouldn't even care about the direction they took velma if they just made her entertaining like if she could just make me laugh but she couldn't i started sweating from how much i wasn't laughing like my body knew this was supposed to be a comedy going into it but there wasn't any ha-has everything out of velma's mouth is just rude and almost everything she says is about a person's skin color or like their occupation or what they're going through, like hardships and shitting. So on she's racist board. and classist. She's just unlikable, like a character you can never root for in any capacity. It really feels like half the ideas they had for this show are just like the worst ideas you and your friends would have had 15 years ago. Like, what if Velma was dealing drugs? <laughs> And then it's in the show. Yeah, there's like a whole big arc of her dealing drugs poorly. And then at the end of the second episode, her and Daphne start making out, even though they've just been shitting on each other the entire show so far. But then they start making out. So that's pretty hype, I guess. The, the whole thing with this show is I really feel like all of it was so lazily thrown together. There's clearly not a whole lot of passion behind it. And it really feels like there's a deep-seated hatred of the Scooby-Doo IP in general here with what they're doing to this thing. It's just bad. But if you are a tiny dick joke enthusiast, man, do I have some good news for you. You're going to get a lot of bang out of your buck from this show, a lot of mileage from that, because there are so many jokes about Fred having 2001 a comedy. Penis, and every time it makes you just slap your knee with a big old smile on your face because it's so good. I'm also being a bit fast and loose with the definition of a joke here because they don't actually make jokes about Fred's small cock. They just say that he has a small cock often. There's not like a joke attached to it. They're just like, oh yeah, and then Fred has a small wiener. And that's it. Like, there's there's nothing more to it. It becomes like a plot point, like, Fred is a small wiener, so he might have killed one of the girls because she might have seen his small penis. And that's, that's the joke. 
After having watched the uh, tiny dick. episodes, I once again have to wonder, beep, beep, who small. is this for? <laughs> I just can't imagine any audience that would sit down and actually have a hoot and a holler watching this show. It doesn't accomplish anything. It doesn't make you laugh. It isn't enjoyable. It doesn't have a good story. It doesn't have good writing or characters. There's no characters that you could even possibly like in the show. It's all just so flat, boring, and if it's not just boring, it's just infuriating to watch because it just keeps repeating the same fucking shit over and over again. So you get the idea. This, I, I was going to say, you should have played this at, at one times five, at uh, 1.5 times speed. Oh, because of his voice? It's so slow? Well, not just his voice. Like, it, that, that droned on for quite a bit. I was like, okay, yeah, we get the idea. We get the yeah. idea. <clears throat> Um, yeah, so, I mean, you get the, you get the idea. It's just, it's, it's yeah. not a good like, show. It's a self-insert into an already existing IP, which we see more and more often, like, hey, instead of writing original stories, let's just lazily change the color of someone and then fucking, okay, it's going to be successful because it, it has a big IP next to it, right? Um, you know, even, even if it's a self-insert, I don't think it would have turned out as bad if A... The comedy was good. Mm -hmm. If the comedy was good, it's passable. Because, like, I didn't particularly like the last uh, series of Scooby-Doo. Uh, it was... What was the name? Man. Yeah. Was it... It wasn't Mystery Incorporated. It was... Or it maybe was it was. I think it was Mystery Incorporated. Yeah. Scooby-Doo Mystery particularly Incorporated. Like it, mm -hmm. But uh, it had really funny moments. And I, and I liked the comedy. So it was still, like, a really decent show. You know? Mm. Even if I didn't particularly like it. It was still pretty good. <clears throat> I can still see why people would like it. Why people do that? The thing is, this show in particular, mm -hmm. I don't see anyone on any social media I'm on, like say anything is good about it. They all call it exactly the same things that that he just said. Exactly the same thing you're saying. Yep. It's a self insert. It's an unfunny self insert. Uh, like the best thing anyone can say about it is that it has representation in it. But even a lot of the people that like it's supposed to be representing are shitting on it. Because the writer is like essentially well known for uh, fetishizing uh, white people, mm. because uh, she like essentially in her like writing and comedy, uh, the the like standard that like you have to be white in order to be beautiful comes out a lot, mm. uh, and reoccurringly, and also that uh, how do you call it, and also like a lot of self hatred uh, of like her own race comes out a lot, and mm. and that's basically all I see all over social media. I see just people talking about that. And even the people who are supposed to be representing are basically like shitting on it for like the one good thing anyone else can come up with for it. Mm -hmm. it like I, I've not seen this show praised in really any capacity whatsoever, or at least in any consistent capacity at all. It's just bad all across the board. <laughs> mm. it, it's just it's just not a good show. It's just not it's not funny. It's trash. Exactly. Yeah. Also, Mindy Kaling liked J.K. Rowling's tweet that we talked about a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. The, I read my most recent royalty checks and find the pain goes away pretty quickly, right? Because, mm -hmm. you know, and it says Mindy Kaling liked. Yeah. So, yeah, it's... Um... Also, her brother apparently created a fake black person's name. To, to get into to medical prove, school. To get in, in, yeah, to get into medical school to prove that they were accepting anyone as long as they were like a uh, uh, black it's you know it, it's it's just Jeez. it's just a whole lot of shit. It's a whole lot of shit. She literally bragged about sexually assaulting Lee Pace and then intimidating staff to avoid a lawsuit on television. Whoa! Let's watch this video now. Let's Speaking watch. Of assault, we can never escape it. There is no escape. There it's, is it, no it's escape. Sexual assault all the way someone down. Someone being a piece of shit. Oh, we're gonna get claimed for this for sure. Oh, definitely. That's fine. Your show has led to being a little Put it at times times 1.5 speed. Power can corrupt. Power can I have a short attention span, please. I mean, Help. it's three minutes long. Okay, no, 1.25, go. I know because this show's called Conan, and I'm a <laughs> raving lunatic all day long. Yeah. No. Yeah, and, I, and so I, I know that having a show named after you can lead to evil behavior. You know, I think the temptation is there. The temptation. And I have, I have succumbed to that temptation. Um, <laughs> we, we've had a lot of handsome actors on the show, mm -hmm. and I am the professional like sure i can be around handsome guys and not i can behave like a leader. thanks for including us with your hand yes, on yes. Handsome guys. And, um uh but we had this uh one actor on the show named lee pace who, who's very i, I, I think, i'm dying know? over here there he lee pace look at that he's a very good looking guy yeah yuck 
<laughs> nice like, like, and a real gentleman, yeah. real gentleman. He came on the show and we had to do this flashback sequence where we were in bed together in college. Mm -hmm. And we're just supposed to be having a conversation, but like he's so tall and he's so handsome that in the middle of it, he was, he was just supposed to be like, what do you think, Mitty? And I was like, and I looked around and I improvised just kissing him in the scene. Mm. Which is not in the script. It's mm. not a, see, you just went for it. You it just is, started I, kissing that guy, that, was, that picture, yeah. He was just looming, he was looming above me. That yeah. picture. And he asked me a question, I was not listening to him at all, because who cares what he was saying? And I was just like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, then, and then he reacted like that, and, and I pretended it didn't happen. And then I walked backstage, we have two writer producers, um, Ike, and, Ike Baron Hills and David Sasson, and they were like, hey man, what are you doing? Let me put this at one time speed, because she already talks fast, so. Doing. You could be sued for that. And I got very scared, uh, and then I you said, um, tell anyone and you're fired. <laughs> Bruh. I said, Bruh. <laughs> Woo! People are cheering. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers for uh, hiding like, sexual assault with your power. Else. I just didn't need our side to confirm it or anything. Holy <laughs> shit. She <laughs> is a terrible human being. Yeah. Six years ago, tell anyone that you're fired is some Infinity Weinstein level shit. This is what we canceled Infinity Train for? Come on, people. Yep. Yeah, we're better than this. Yeah. Jesus. Jesus Imagine. Okay, Jesus let, let's flip the genders real quick. I was sitting next to a girl in a, in a scene, and then, uh, you know, I wasn't supposed to kiss her, but I did anyway. And then I threatened people against uh, reporting it. And I told them, threatened them with their jobs. But because she's like, eh, and then I just kind of did it. <laughs> and everyone's like, yeah, fucking fire them, girl queen pussy buzz, bitch. It's, yeah. Uh, like, uh, yeah, no. Nah. Like, uh, uh, a guy would never be able to do it so brazenly. But a guy would be more likely to get away with it. Like, it's it's all bad all the way down. Well, it's just I, I don't think a guy bad. could go on national television and brag about it. Well, to yeah, be that's fair. why. That's yeah. why, like, you could be more open about it if you're a girl. Like, it's easy, mm -hmm. you know. She just did it. But you're more likely to, your power has more weight when you're a guy. Like, behind yeah. the scenes. That's why Harvey Weinstein was able to get away with it for so long. Yeah, it's true. You just, like, for a guy, all you, like, the same thing, the reason why Andrew Tate fucked up. Like, all you have to do is sh sh shut the fuck up, and yep. you're more, li more likely going to get away with it. Yep. Like, girls are less likely to get away with it, but you can brag about it on TV if you do. Like, that's the difference here. Yeah, it's it's crazy, man. Um, now, well, closing thoughts. It's all it's, it's shit all the way down. What was the last thing that we're supposed to talk about? There Wizards of else. the Coast, but we can't. Oh. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Wizards of the Coast wants to take the IP back and can't retroactively charge people. Oh. So, uh, Legal Eagle actually covered this, yeah. uh, like recently, and he was basically saying that everything that that legal that uh, D and D is trying to do, mm -hmm. as long as you switch up the words that they use, uh, because you're technically not allowed to uh, to copyright rules. Mm. You're not allowed to trademark or copyright your own processes by which things happen. You can own mm. the end results, but you can't own the processes. And 90% mm. of like D&D &D is the processes. It's the rules. Yeah. So like if you wanted to include the specific way it was word, the rules are worded, that would be a, a, a like a trademark, like D&D &D would have legal claim over that. But for the rules, and that's usually what like a Dimension Twenty or Critical Role are using, mm -hmm. uh, for for their you know for their campaigns and stuff like that, uh, like uh, they would have no claim over it. So, and this, and I mean, I guess people kind of already knew this. We all kind of already knew this. Not the specifically the rules part, but the fact that like their claims are too broad, mm -hmm. uh, and so they're just trying to muscle people with money essentially. Mm. Uh, like legal legal didn't say that they, they did not say that whatsoever. They just said that like D and D just wouldn't have claim over the the rules, and that's the main feature. And everything else was that. And then they released like a whole like D and D like a, as legal legal was releasing that video or like trying to release it, they released a whole other thing where it was like, no, we're not trying to claim that. Like basically lawyer speak for like like no, oops, sorry, we take you backsies. Uh, you my know. client pleads oopsie daisy. <laughs> yeah, my client <laughs> pleads oopsie daisy. Uh, uh, we're, we're going to release something else now. It's just a bunch of like lawyer bullshit, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, basically they're just retracting everything and they're, they're releasing something else now. Uh, they're going back on their thing. I mean, like it's a tabletop game and like yeah. the, in the midst of this whole thing, their CEO was like, like, we think that D and D is a very poorly monetized IP. It's, it's a tabletop game. Like, 
it, it doesn't exactly have a lot of monetization. Uh, yeah, because be what are you going to add in loot boxes or something like that? That what? doesn't make any sense. Like, and, and to be honest, like, none of it really matters. Like, w what are the main features? Like, if you use, like, D&D stuff, Becca, just fucking change the name to Greg or some shit. Like, the the concept of a lich cannot be owned by d d just like how Disney can't own the concept of a mouse. Like, <gasps> Well, that's true. I didn't think of it that way. But, yeah, yeah, you're right. Because it's the processes. <laughs> like, you can make up any character you want. Fuck, you can just go to generic, oh, it's just a demon from hell. Oh, it's yeah. Satan. Oh, it's a yeah, okay. go off the oh, Bible. It, yeah, just... Like, I, like most of their shit is essentially just like free, like old, old history, uh, uh, mythology. Like, and then you're like, you're, you're like Abraham rolled a 20 and that's why he was able to get the Ark to escape the flood. Duh. Yeah, exactly. Duh. Like, like even if you use their stuff, like, let's say use like, uh, like, cause like Vecca has like other shit in there. Like you can see him through like, uh, items like the hand of Vecca and the, Vecna, the eye right? of Vecca, I think. Yeah. Vecna. Mm -hmm. uh just be like oh the the lich king greg uh left his eye behind it's the eye of greg and you know and then like, they're what trying they to go do? after like, stranger things and all that bs too yeah those are those are part of like like just generic mythology that we've had from before wizards of the coast so literally all you have to do is change a couple names and then there you go like the concepts themselves they can't really own them because they're public domain <laughs> so it's just greedy businesses being greedy that's what yeah, I Yeah, greedy businesses being, being greedy. Yeah. yeah. And that, that, that's why I still think, like, my original idea that they're really just trying, like, now it developed more of a thing, so I don't think they're going to do it anymore. But I think their original intention, because, you know, like, I mean, lawyers are stupid, but they're not that stupid. Like, I'm sure they understood that, oh, technically, uh, Wizards of the Coast doesn't have any real legal claim to any of this, really. Mm -hmm. Uh, and what small legal claim they do have can be easily circumvented by the people by just, you know, changing a couple names, doing a couple of edits, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, so oh well. they're really just trying to muscle people uh, like, you know, hey, that's a good looking artwork you got there. Yeah. Be a shame if you got uh, got inundated with some lawsuits, you know? Yeah. You know. Oh, well, that's. Um, yeah. That's, that's, that's the end corruption. of that. That's broke till Friday. Um, Capitalism. Any thoughts, guys? Michael, you've been fairly quiet this uh, this this one. He laughed at my oh, no, oh, um, client playing right Oopsie Daisy. Fine. Oh, you're at work. Oh, that's awesome. How's work? <laughs> I'm just moving shit around. Nice. Well, bullshit. Don't I'm tell anyone work. where you work, so you don't get doxxed. Broke to Friday. <laughs> yeah, p p point to your left, Edward. So this looks like we're no, your other left. Ah. <laughs> uh. We're broke till Friday. Goodbye, my friends. We'll see you next week. Now I'm gonna go and beat my meat. And we're broke till Friday. Goodbye, my friends. We'll see you next week. And now I'm gonna go and beat my meat. And we're broke till Friday.